Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going over the brand new Metropolis palette from Natasha Denona. I am going to show you guys three different looks, including the one that I am currently wearing right now. I am going to swatch this bad boy. <laughs> Look how dirty it is. <laughs> and then I'm also going to be showing you guys comparisons of as many Natasha palettes as I possibly could. Like, look at this stack here. I swatched as many as I could before my daughter tapped out. <laughs> I'm going to start off with the information and then get into the swatches of this palette. So first off, this is what it looks like. It has that nice kind of shiny case, a lot like the gold palette from Natasha Denona. And I'm going to show you guys side by side, size wise, what this is like. So the gold palette and then the Metropolis palette. It's a little bit smaller. And let me open it up. I think this is also the palette that people were most comparing this palette to. But you can see there's 28 shades in here versus the 15 in the larger palette. But obviously you're getting more product in the gold palette. So there are those. I also want to show you guys the size comparison of the recent Sunrise palette, which also contains the mini shades, just like the 28 Pan Metropolis. The Sunrise obviously only has 15, but as you can see size wise, if I can get them side by side, that's what they look like side by side. Now let's get into just the details of this guy. It retails for $129 but this one is limited edition. So if this is something that you are looking at, make sure that you grab it while you can. I have no idea when this is going to sell out, how long it's going to be out, but I just know that's limited edition. Now, just like all the palettes of this size or larger, you are getting the mirror inside, as well as this clear plastic piece right here that has all the shade names on it. And you would think that I would put that to good use during my tutorials. I didn't, I still pointed to the shades. <laughs> But let me go ahead and show you guys the swatches. For the first row, we have Rust, Troop, Orium, Shield, Ripe, Stain, and Mace. Second row, Rope, Fuse, Lethal, Penny, Chrism, Aqueous, and Queen. Third row, Blaze, Noble, Imperia, Royal, Crest, Enigma and Pure. And then for the last row, we have Azoic, Jubilee, Symbol, Rezone, Claret, Helena, and Antique. For the rest of the information on the palette, if you go to Sephora and then to Natasha Denona's actual website, you are going to get conflicting information. So I'm mainly going to be sticking to the Natasha Denona website. I mean, that seems like the obvious thing to do. And on her website, it reads, celebrate the season of our five-year anniversary with 28 brand new shades and one new formula. On the Sephora website, it says that there's two new formulas <laughs> of Natasha Denona's iconic quality pigmented eyeshadows. This new formula will feature a hybrid creamy pressed powder, leaving you with a maximum color payoff. The limited edition 28 shade eyeshadow palette is inspired by New York City color scheme of the 20th century. The new formula that she is referring to is labeled as CP in the palette, and it is this very creamy type of formula. And if my counting skills are doing well today. There are 11 in this palette. Now what I find to be interesting is that she just recently redid the cranberry palette. The original cranberry palette had this CP formula as well. It, yeah, these are labeled as CP. These two shades right here, they're kind of wet feeling. This one has not really created that hard pan over top, but this one has. And if you can see, it kind of looks like marker. I recently talked about this palette in comparison of this one in my updates. So I was shocked to see her come back out with a formula like this because she redid this palette and made those shades matte in the new Cranberry palette. So I was a little bit like, ah, scared to get this because I didn't know if it was going to be a mess, but we will see what happens whenever I get into the tutorial. I made sure to use a lot of those shades because I wanted to see what would happen, especially after heavy swatching. You saw the palette, you saw <laughs> how messy it is. I wanted to see if those shades ended up creating hard pan, if I could use them with different brushes, how they applied to the eyes. And you guys will definitely get to see all of that. I wanna warn you that I just got a chemical peel. So if you see things like right now on the side of my face, 
right on the side of my nose. You'll see like a little bit of peeling and there's a little bit right up here. It's just because I got a chemical peel. So just forewarning that if you see anything like that, don't be alarmed. I know I'm a flaky mess. Anywho, let's go ahead and get into this eye look first and then I will get into the other two as well. Zoeva 227 and this shade right here. I'm starting in the crease. And again, this is one of those creamy shades. And the brush that I'm using, the 227, is a blend of natural and synthetic fibers. It's going back and forth first, and then I'm slowly going to work this shade upward. This shade can be built up to be pretty dark, but I'm getting little product on my brush because I don't want it to be too dark. I want the transition area to be a little bit lighter. Wayne Goss number 18 in this bottom shade. I'm going to start this on the outer corner. Once I get it applied there, I'm going to bring it into the crease and then slowly work it upward. Wayne Goss number 19, and I'm going in for this one. I am going to stamp this on the outer corner. Bringing it about halfway over the lid. Then I'm going to take the excess and work it upward very lightly on this outer edge. I'm not bringing this up too far because I don't want to cover up that like orangey brown shade. Esam W21 and this gray metallic. I'm going to apply this to the front portion of the lid, tapping over the last shade we put down. I'm not tapping completely over it, just the edge right around so it blends together. MAC 242 and the lightest shade in the palette. You're going to see me use this several times because I feel like it's the only shade that I can really use at my brow arch unless I want to go more dramatic. Royal and Lang Nickel BOM 18 and this shade. I'm going to smudge this all along the lower lash line. Refer number three, I'm going to grab this gold. I'm applying this directly on the inner corner. After I get this laid down, I'm going to go add on a liner on my top inner rim and just mascara. Zoeva 234 and this green right here. I'm starting off by applying this all over the lid. Now I want to mention that I am using the Anastasia primer and I do not have that set. I am having to continuously dip into this and pack it on the lid. Wayne Goss 26S, and I am going to start applying this into the crease and working it upward. This is a synthetic hair brush. I'm using that because this is like that wet, kind of creamy matte formula. And I want to see how well this blends out. Just going in back and forth windshield wiper motions and then circular motions pushing it upward. Same brush, now I'm going to go in with this shade which is also a creamy formula. I'm going to tap this on the outer corner. Bringing it into the crease. I'm bringing it also about halfway over the lid, so I'm just kind of tapping it over. Getting some of the excess product off of my brush. 
and then slowly feathering it upward on this outer V or outer corner because I'm bringing it up. I'm going to go ahead and bring that the rest of the way into the inner portion of the crease. I'm not going to blend that upward. Clean blending brush. This is an ESOM S33. I'm just going right around the edges of everything. Zoeva 234. I'm going to grab this shade. This is the same brush from earlier. I just wiped off the excess. Now I'm tapping this shade right over the top, the front inner corner, and then tapping and blending over the darker green. MAC 242 in this shade right here. I'm going to highlight my brow arch as well as kind of clean up that green. And when this mixes with the green, you can see it kind of turns a little bit, but it makes it look so much cleaner. Delium 716, and I'm gonna grab this shade. And yes, I do realize that these have names, but <laughs> bringing the plastic piece down and back up and back down, I just don't feel like messing with. I am applying this as a liner for the look right up against the lash line. Wayne Goss 27S and back in with the original shade I grabbed. I'm applying this right underneath the lower lashes. Back in with this shade in the Delium 716. I am going to take this as close to the lower lash line as I possibly can. Blend it out with that last brush we used, the 27S. No additional product on the brush. Same 27S, I'm going to grab this gold shade. And I am going to apply that to the inner corner. Now I would add on black liner to my top inner rim and mascara. However, I'm just going to wash off my face. And with a chemical peel, I'm trying to do as least amount of rubbing and scrubbing as I possibly can. So this is the finished eye. And I'm going to move on and do something else on this side. Smith 230. I'm going to go in with this matte. I'm going to go directly into the crease first. Again, I do not have this eye set. I'm just using the Anastasia primer. I'm going to start working this upwards. I'm not sure if I even mentioned the brush. This is a Smith 230. I'm bringing this all the way up for my transition shade, all the way to the inner portion of the inner corner, all the way to the outer portion. Same brush, and I'm going to go in with this orange, again, directly into the crease. I'm going to get this on the outer corner. Ooh, a little of this goes a long way. <laughs> Blend this upwards. MAC 217 and this creamy shade, which looks black, but it's really blue. I'm going to tap this on the outer corner. And I'm using the 217 because last time with the greens I used um, synthetic brushes and this is a natural hairbrush. So I want to see how it applies with a natural hairbrush. This is a lot of pigment. I'm going to have to tap off my brush, I think, or rub the excess off. All right, I got off the excess and now I'm going to start blending this upward into the crease. Actually impressed. I really didn't know what to expect with these. The cranberry palette I feel was harder to use. This one uh, is fairly simple and they're working really well. Just going around the edges of that with my Smith 230. I didn't add any extra product. I'm just blending everything out. And that was one dip into the blue and I had to take off <laughs> some of the product from my brush. I am going back in and adding a little bit more depth with that same color on the outer corner, but I am not going to bring it upward. MAC 242 and the shimmery blue. I am applying this dry 
I'm going to go all over the front portion of the lid and then tapping over the last shade we put down. Remember, I pack and then swipe these type of shades on. Going all the way up to the crease. Again, just tapping over the last shade. It's really pretty. Wayne Goss 05, going back in with the creamy blue. I'm gonna take this right along the lower lashes. I mean, look how easily this goes on. I'm not gonna lie, I'm impressed. I really thought these were gonna be a problem. Just going outer to inner and then blending slightly downward. I'm going to take this shade again for my brow arch on a MAC 242. Smith 230, I'm going to tap into this shade and this shade and kind of mix them. Tapped off the excess and I just want to really make sure that that popped through the blue on this outer portion of the eye. MAC 219 and back in with the brow highlight shade. I am going to pop this on the inner corner. Thoughts on the palette. I have to admit, just like I said in the beginning of the video, I was concerned with those CP shades. I felt like when I was even swatching them, I was scared. I was so scared that I was like, there's so many of these shades in here. And if these cause a problem, 11 shades, that is going to make this a dud in my opinion but I am relieved to tell you that these work so much better. So I am assuming that she revamped the formula that was in the cranberry palette and made them much more stable, much more creamy. Like I said, I've swatched these so many times and they never created any kind of hard pan on top of them. The biggest issue I have is that I've, I've used a lot of it. So I've got like little divots in those shades because I swatched them so many times. And then obviously I use them in my eye looks. And I just think it's great that I have no hard pan on any of those and they all worked really well. That is such a relief to me and they are beautiful. They are so beautiful. They blend out really, really well. I specifically used different brush types and whatnot just to see how they would go on. I wanted to pack it on the lid. I wanted to be able to blend and just see if they actually worked, and they do. So that is one thing that's going to set this palette apart from the other ones that you're going to see swatched later. Even if the color looks like it's a duplicate, the texture is extremely different. Whereas a lot of the shades like this one here, these down here, this one, will have a matte shade that's similar to it in some of the other palettes, but the texture and the effect that you get on the eye is different. So that's one thing that I do really, really like that I, I just love them. I'm really thrilled with them. I didn't play with the golds a lot in my tutorials and that's because the golds here like, I already know. They are, they swatched phenomenally. I was playing with them. I had no issues with them, so I knew that they weren't going to be a problem. Whenever I review a palette or use it, I want to try out shades that I think might create an issue and see what happens. This blue right here was back and forth with the swatches. Sometimes I got a clean swatch out of it and sometimes I had to kind of build it up. And that can easily be because what if you <laughs> if you do YouTube, you know when you swatch and swatch and swatch, your finger can almost get smooth because you're constantly wiping it off and then it just creates, like my fingers are sore sometimes after doing these swatches. And with how many I did, it definitely became the case. So I definitely wanted to try out this shade and the creamy like matte type of shade formulas and they all performed very well. I did not have a dud of anything that I used and this gold on the inner corner, I had to try and tone it down, it was so intense. And the golds in here, while they look similar to some of the other ones, and you can definitely say like you don't need them. So if you're buying this palette just for the golds and you already have a bunch of golds in your collection, I would say, man, don't do it. But if you like this color scheme, this is a beautiful palette. I love the textures that are in here. I think that's what makes this so special. And the color arrangement, 
this screams fall to me. I think it's beautiful. This is one of the palettes that she just really killed. She just did such an amazing job with it. I'm really happy with it. I look at this and there's so many different things that you can do. There are a few shades that are just like, ah, there, there's a lot of those. Like this one here, this one you think would be one of the ones that I would say, oh yeah, there's a lot in my other palettes, but that has like this sparkle and sheen to it that is different than the other shades. So I would say the most dupable ones are definitely like this red here, um, your neutral tones you're gonna see a lot of, like you're gonna get this orange everywhere. Uh, the green, like this kind of green is dupable. This one right here that is a creamy formula, it's the first one I put on. With it being that creamy formula and that color, it's just special. Overall, I I really like this palette. It's it's top notch. It's a great palette. So let's go ahead and get into the comparisons. And I'm just going to show you guys pictures of the palettes and then the swatches of the shades that I find could be similar to something in this palette. In every single picture, the first shade in each group is from the Metropolis palette. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, <laughs> I will read to you guys what is on the last picture. But my daughter was like, ah, my arm is starting to kind of tingle. And I was like, you know what, we need to stop. So I just did everything from like these little mini palettes all on one because there wasn't that many. I didn't want to rub her arm raw. So let's go ahead and get into these comparisons. First up, we have the Green Brown 28 palette. Now we have the Purple Blue 28 palette. The Tropic palette. Star palette. Sunrise Palette, the Sunset Palette, the Gold Palette, and the Coral Palette. For the last picture, I have Crest from the Metropolis palette, Peach Gold from the Joya palette, Imperia, again Metropolis, Gold from Joya, Claret from Metropolis, Red Bronze from Aries, Ripe from Metropolis, Burnt Terracotta from Aries, and just in case you're not aware, Joya and Aries are the holiday palettes that came out a couple years ago, Mace from Metropolis, Bronze Age from the Nude Palette, and then Copper Stone from the Camel Palette. That is it for the comparison swatches. I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you're gonna ask me if I would recommend this palette, I definitely do. I think it is beautiful, and while there are shades that you can definitely find in other palettes, it's that creamy matte, uh, whatever type of formula that is, that I think makes this so special. But with that being said, I think that they are easy to blend. I don't have any difficulties with them, but if you're looking at this palette and you're thinking there's just a bunch of mattes in here with the metallics, that's not the case. So I just wanna make sure that you guys understand that. I think the formula works great. I don't think that the majority of people are going to have an issue with it, but if you don't like that creamy type of texture, you might not like this, so just FYI. I do. I think it's phenomenal. Anywho, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.